An alcohol is a specific class of organic molecule with a hydrocarbon attached to a hydroxyl group. They are useful in a lot of applications, including as a combustible fuel. But each alcohol will burn at a different temperature. That's because they have different covalent bonds that are being broken as the substance combusts. That means they'll release different amounts of heat. In this lab, we will be predicting and measuring the enthalpy of combustion of an alcohol. Before the lab, calculate the enthalpy of reaction for the combustion of ethanol. In the discussion section, you'll describe your calculations and determine the percent error in your measurements. Your measurement won't exactly be correct and may be off by as much as 50%. In the discussion section, explain at least one source of error during the lab that could explain why the measurement was different from the calculation. The materials that you'll need for this lab are an alcohol burner, a ring stand, a thermometer, a 250 milliliter Florence flask, 150 milliliters of water, a clamp for the thermometer, and a clamp for the flask, and some ethanol. The water that you use in this lab does not need to be distilled water. For the procedure, first, Weigh the alcohol burner and record the mass. Then add the alcohol and record the total mass of the burner with the alcohol in it. You should fill the burner most of the way and make sure to include the wick in your mass. Set up the ring stand with the Florence flask clamped above the alcohol burner. The flask should be about three quarters of an inch above the wick. Put the thermometer in the clamp so that it is held in the middle of the flask. Record your initial temperature. Light the burner and let the water heat up by at least 20 degrees. Put out the burner and record the final temperature of the water. Weigh the burner and record the final mass. The difference in mass of the burner will be the mass of ethanol that was combusted. Next, I'll show you how to determine the enthalpy of combustion for ethanol from our measured results. So in this lab, we took ethanol and we combusted it with oxygen in order to produce CO2, H2O, and some heat. This heat is what we're really trying to get at. We're trying to figure out how much heat did this ethanol release? Well, that's a pretty simple thing to measure, surprisingly, because all we need to do is get that heat to go somewhere else to heat up something and then measure the change in temperature. That's a pretty straightforward calculation. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating what's called the enthalpy of combustion for ethanol. So that's delta HC, C for combustion. And that calculation is just what was my change in enthalpy per mole of ethanol. So it's a very straightforward calculation. So let's start by figuring out the change in enthalpy here. That is a pretty straightforward calculation because that heat, what we're measuring here, is just the change in heat of the water, the water that's that was in that flask. And that's a calculation we've done before. That's just going to be mc delta t, right? So then our mass, our m, that was just the 150 milliliters of water because water has a density of one gram per milliliter. So this is 150 grams. So because we put 150 milliliters of water in there, we get 150 grams. Then our c, that's the specific heat of water. It's 4.184. And then our delta T, well, that's the change in temperature that you measured. Now, I measured 45 degrees. You'll probably have a different value for that one. All right. Now, when I calculate all of those together, I just multiply them, and I get a Q of 28,000. And I'm rounding here because that's 28,000 joules, 
And standard procedure here, because these are such large numbers, we generally work in kilojoules. So I'm gonna convert this to kilojoules. That's very simple. That'll just be dividing this by a thousand. So my Q is actually equal to 28 kilojoules. And so this is the number that I'm gonna be using in this calculation right here. Simple enough. Next, I need the moles. I need the moles of ethanol that were consumed. How much ethanol did I burn in this reaction? And that's why we measured the alcohol burner before and after the reaction. So in this case, let's switch our color here. In this case, I'm gonna need the molar mass of ethanol, which that's pretty simple to calculate. It'll just be 46, 46 grams per mole. And then I need to know the mass of the ethanol that I burned. And so this is something that we measured. You measured your initial mass, mine was 258.29. And then I'm going to subtract my final mass, I'm going to do this like this, minus 251.63. So that was my final mass. So my initial mass minus my final mass, and that gives me 6.66 grams. So I'm going to convert that right to moles. So all I need to do is multiply by, so I've got, I'm going from grams to moles, so just dividing, dividing by 46, and that's gonna give me 0.1448 moles. And that's gonna be the number that I plug in right there. So when I take that, when I take that number, I'm taking 28 divided by 0.1448, and I'm going to get, so that's 28, divided by 0.1448, that's gonna get me 195, 195 kilojoules. And so that's gonna be my enthalpy of combustion for ethanol. So for your discussion section, you'll need that calculation that you just did with your measured values to figure out what was your measured uh, enthalpy of combustion. And then you should calculate the actual enthalpy of formation of the combustion of ethanol by just doing the same equation we do normally for calculating the enthalpy of formation, taking the enthalpy of formation of your products minus the enthalpy of formation of all of your reactants. Then calculate your percent error by taking 100% times the measured minus the calculated value. So the measured, that would be that guy, the calculated would be that guy, divided by the calculated value. That'll give you the percent error of your actual experiment. Now, these will probably be pretty high. You'll probably have a lot of error in this. And then with that in mind, you want to explain possible sources of energy loss in this lab. 